In this video, I'll be doing an unboxing of this Asus F2A85-V Pro motherboard. So this is for the new AMD FM2 chipset, or the Trinity CPUs. I bought this for £103 from Amazon. And I think having bought it, I may need to go and return it tomorrow, because I'm not sure it's compatible with the NVIDIA graphics cards. I've just read on the specs that it's Crossfire, or AMD Crossfire only. Damn it! Quick look at the outside of the box first, and you'll see it's got a lot of marketing blurb across it. Windows 8 ready, oh well, don't care, using it with Linux. A lot of the features mentioned on the back of the box seem to be related to the software that gets installed for Windows. That will look quite intriguing. Asus Remote Go, one-stop PC remote control and home entertainment. So controlling the motherboard, or controlling the computer, through, the, through a smartphone, so an Android or Apple. But then again, you could do that with other software, so it's not the be-all and end-all of everything. So in the box, we've got the motherboard wrapped up in an anti-static bag. Got an instruction manual, and there's a CD inside here. That would be a driver disc, or DVD. Quick start guide. Quick, easy to use plug here, so you've got the front light and on off switch on here, so you can connect them and then disconnect that quite easy. Handy if you're using Asus motherboards. We've got four SATA 6GB cables and a motherboard backplate. Right, here's the motherboard. I thought it would be really cool to go with one of these boards with a heatsink across the board here, so a metal bar going all the way across. It just looks good. I know the board's going to be inside the case and you're not going to see it though, so. Oh, it still looks good though. Right, so looking at the connectivity, so on the back ports we've got uh, PS2, so that's combined mouse and keyboard, with two USB 2s, infrared audio link, HDMI, display port, VGA, DVI, eSATA, two USB 3, gigabit ethernet port, another two USB 3, and the 3.5mm audio jack connectors. The card connectivity got PCI X16, another PCI X16, but using the two together would only run at 8 speed, but just one on its own at 16 speed. This PCI X16 runs at 4 speed. Got two PCI X1s and two legacy PCIs. Looking at the headers on the side of the board, we have a SPDIF out, fan output. I think that's a serial port, four USB 2s, got a little switch down here, this direct key button here gives you the option of booting straight into the BIOS, you've got the front panel headers, I've right, got another push button here, so what's this one, BIOS flashback, flashback LED, BIOS reset I think. On this side you have 7 SATA 6 gigabit, fan header, USB 3 header, power, another push button for, I think that's a memory speed setting. So if you overcooked the memory and it's gone a bit unstable you can press that and it will reset it I believe. We've got four memory ports, now this can take DDR3s uh, overclocked, I think over 2 gigahertz and it's up to 64 gig of RAM you can put on this board. So ironically, the lower spec processors nowadays can ha accept more RAM than the AM3 boards. It's ridiculous. So the, so the FX CPUs can't have so much memory on them. Uh, right, I've got another two fan headers. Now something I noticed about all these fan headers on here, that they're all four pins, so it can be, the speed can be controlled I think for the software that gets installed on Windows. Well, my fears were unfounded in the end about the NVIDIA cards. It works absolutely fine. Obviously, the restriction is that it will only work with one card and you cannot SLI them. Uh, I was just showing you there the speed that the BIOS boots up now in the uh, new generation uh, boards. It just shoots straight through it. I've got one in the older generation UEFI BIOSes and it takes about 30 seconds to get through it. That was about two or three seconds. That's pretty good. Alright, thanks for watching. See you later.